This is the plasma ERG cell. And, and from what I understand, this is a little bit similar to a PAP engine in some ways. In some ways. Um, the coil windings are different. Um, we've actually got a little bit different, but in the sense that the PAP engine is where this all started. That is 100% true. He was the guy who decided to that plasma expansion could be used to power a piston. What we've done is we've removed the radioactive elements that PAP used. We've also changed the coil windings. So if you go through the PAP patent, you'll find that he was a paranoid man. He tried to write it in a very confusing manner. Some of the stuff was downright misleading. So we've kind of figured out what he's done, and then we've removed the dangerous elements of it. This here is, is basically public domain. Everything here is covered by expired patents years ago. Um, this was what we used yeah, to develop yeah, this, where show we've got in here basically a test bed, and, and you can put how these things together at home for real cheap. So these are automotive they parts, sure they're high performance, yes, they're not like what's in your car, but these are basically high performance Every spark plugs that have been converted to electrodes. These are igniters. This spring here, I want to say, came from an office chair or something along those lines. These coils we wound ourselves. This is just a Lexan cylinder. Then it takes what we use this for is to determine what the proper gas mixture was. So, so this is a, a kind of a test bed. This is a test bed. Um, we tested coil windings. We tested what gas mixtures pushed the piston the furthest. We tested what force was put at the end. We tested did we notice any anomalies such as radiation or anything like that. Um, measured the light coming out. We did all sorts of fun stuff with this. This has gone through a lot of use. But we brought this here because, A, we, we brought it here last year. We did a private showing um, between John and Sterling Allen. And he uh, talked about an anomaly that he had discovered based on some of the old PAP writings. But we also brought it here to show you that this is public domain technology. You can do this at home yourself. Um, you can go home and build this. The instructions are online. There is kind of a convoluted process. But you can get this, and you can turn it on and off, and you can see the piston pop. And, Improve yes. the process. And what we it. wanted to show you is that Other anybody that can make a piston pop, anybody can make a one cylinder yeah. thing and, and show that plasmic expansion yeah. move yeah. with a tremendous yeah. amount of force. Yeah. Statistical Taking this sure, and putting it into something like this is what we bring to the table. What we bring the electronic suite to the, to the table where we have a lot of intellectual property involved there. Making this move back and forth is one thing. Making it move back and forth at 1800 RPMs where it's efficient enough that you can run power back into it and get itself running where it's running off the gas itself um, and not off external power sources. That's where Plasma and Intelligentry come so, so that's, yeah, so that's... That, that makes sense. So now this, okay, so these are the igniters, and then it goes into the chamber, and the gas expands the piston, it pushes the piston back. Correct. So and actually, is, what's not demonstrated here is usually we'll have a second coil in this engine just to contain it. Now this one, they've played with one coil and two coils. We didn't bring a second coil here. The first coil is much stronger. We've got a mix of gases, and it's actually written right here. We've got lighter gases such as helium, heavier gases such as argon. And by compressing in the coil, what you do is you move those lighter atoms towards the center, and the heavier atoms gravitate towards the side. We want the reaction, we want the plasmic transition to begin with the helium. And so the coil squeezes it down where the helium is dead center, right in the middle here, right in the middle between these four electrodes. We then pulse it with a radio frequency, and what that does is it brings the energy of the helium up to a higher energy state so that when we hit it with the 400,000 volts, the plasma transition occurs. And we get a wave event which all the atoms just begin pushing away from each other, Pushes at a constant speed where the force at the beginning is the same as the force at the end. It's very interesting behavior. It's kind of like a steam engine. Pushes it over, and then the moment you know we see the plasmic event occur, we shut it down, and then those atoms collapse back into the initial gas, pulling the piston back in a vacuum. Now, most of the force is the push. It's not the pull. The pull is just a kind of a natural vacuum that pulls it back. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we did this offset, so that way the push is being slightly assisted by the pull on the other side. Oh, I see what you. I see what you mean. So one of them collapses the other. We want to maintain an equilibrium of the gas reservoir in here. Because these pistons aren't sealed, they're designed to kind of breathe into the main chamber and pull back as we're going back and forth. And by having them offset, the, the pressure inside is always constant, so things just kind of go back and forth and breathe. 
and as the gas breaks down, um, and it does that over time, we're not quite sure how and why, and we, we, we're excited about getting fancier equipment and studying it, but right now it's, it's powerful enough that we can bring it to market. Over time, we want to maintain the pressure in here, kind of the same as the atmospheric pressure outside. So this is not kind of a, yeah, it's not it's not a high pressure versus a low pressure. It's basically the same as your atmosphere. But I understand no oxygen. You guys can do, I mean, thousands of RPMs and hundreds of horsepower already, right? Correct. So. This reference engine in earlier incarnations and test yeah, forms, this one is not running yet. In earlier incarnations, so they brought stuff up to 1800 RPM, producing about 274 horsepower. Wow. So, and that was based upon, um, what's that? Out of that right there? Yeah. Not out of this. Oh, okay. This is a new version. Um, if you guys were here last year, you saw an older cool. version, and if you go online, there's like a whole history of the version. Sooner. Yeah. Um, it's just so a modified yeah, Harley engine. All of our test beds, period, which allows the modified Harley engine. That's where you get this. Right okay. So we're not going to show this running here. It's not running so yet. Um, when it runs, our licensees will be the first to kind of play with it and get it together. Part of the licensing course involves building one of these, get it running, and taking it home. And we're expecting that open that up in another month or two. So. We're hoping late August, we're still waiting on a couple more parts from the manufacturers to come in. John's back at the lab right now assembling these things now because we've got enough that we're starting to put them together. Once they're together and we begin tests, when we're confident that this new circuit board configuration works, um, we pull our licenses in, we begin training them, we begin issuing licenses, and then they're, they're free to go out and begin manufacturing. And we expect that to happen Q4 this year. Okay. Well, thank you again. But I urge you to come back later, like maybe around 4 o'clock. We're going to bring some more information on this test unit because one thing that's very important to us is to realize that there's no magic going on here. This is all old science. None of this is, uh, you know, fairy dust or, or mystery stuff. Um, we're going to show a little bit more about how to make this so you can go home and make it. Prove the concept yourself because what we bring to the table isn't this 30-year-old ability to kind of make a piston go pop. It's the ability to, it's the electronic it's the ability that goes to make a, an 1800, 274 horsepower engine out of the thing. Yeah. At least five times. Well, again, that was Dan. Dan Glover from PTP Licensing. Dan Glover. Thanks again, Dan. Thanks.